All right, guys, so I'm going to give a short, uh, hopefully short, tour of my game room. It's been a while since I've done this, and um, I've made a lot of changes since the last time. So I'll kind of just go walk around and talk about the, my setup here and how I have my game room set up. So uh, I guess we'll start over here. So this is my HD setup. This is a 55-inch um, LG 4K TV. Um, and I have consoles hooked up to this, the majority of which are HDMI. We can get in closer and take a look. So, uh, right up here, top left, I've got my PC Engine Duo R. It's, um, RGB modded. And I've got that running through, you can see over here, the uh, RetroTank 5X. Also running through the tank is my uh, This Is Cool Sega Saturn. And I've got a uh, Dreamcast here that's outfitted with mode. Second shelf here, I've got a Mister set up. And I've actually got the digital board. Um, I know that they have the original I.O. board, which allows you to output uh, uh, VGA and component and things like that, but I never really intended for my Mister to be uh, a CRT device, so I went with the the newer digital board because it has a power switch. Right over here to the side, you can just kind of turn it on because the original I/O board you'd have to have an inline uh, switch attached to the power kit cord, which you know, which is fine. But I I never thought I just never needed it, so I went with the digital board instead. Next to that, I've got my Analog NT Mini Noir. Um, aluminum shell, kind of top of the line, um, FPGA console. All of Analog's consoles are really, really sweet. They're just very, very high end. It's kind of a nice feel. Uh, it's got Famicom slots and NES slots. You can kind of hear that metal clink. Let's put the cartridges in. Got uh, GameCube next to that. I've got the GC loader inside there. You can kind of see. Um, don't actually play a whole lot of GameCube. I actually had a decently large GameCube collection at one point, um, but I never played them. Once I got the GC loader, I just kind of sold off almost all of my games um, to put towards other parts of my collection. Here's a uh, PS3 Slim. Um, yeah, don't play it a whole lot. Down here, I've got my Super NT Analog, the uh, North American Edition. Next to that, I've got the Mega SG Analog. And got a, a bunch of my mini systems down here. Now, I never really had the mini systems as part of my main setup. They're just kind of a novelty that I would uh, sporadically pull out and attach. But... Um, once I got them all hooked up in the... Uh, I've got a little HDMI switcher in the back there so that these guys are all in one switch. Um, I like having them out because I just really like the save states, the convenience of the save states on these. And I know they're emulation, of course. And I know that the um, the quality and the, the video output, you know, the artifacts and scaling, all of that can be an issue and the lag can be an, an issue with emulation. And why would somebody do that when you have the FPGA options like the Mr., like the analog consoles, and so on? And the simple answer is it's just so convenient to be able to play through games that I never had time for it or just couldn't never make it through all the way as a kid. When you can save state halfway through Avengers Shinobi, come right back to it when you have time. And I think anybody who is older like me and has kids you realize that your gaming sessions are cut down to about an hour or less. And you just don't have the time you can commit to anymore. So having not only having the save states, but the visual save states, being able to go through the the uh, menu screen and see where you left off is such a huge convenience. It, at my point in my life, it almost trumps the other, uh, the other factors when it comes to choosing what kind of system to play on. 
I'm not saying it's the best way to play, don't get me wrong, I'm just saying when you only have little chunks of time to play and you let's say you're trying to make your way through a certain game, they're just awfully convenient to have them. So, so that's why those mini consoles are there. <clears throat> On the back side here, you can see I've got the PS5 and I've got an Xbox 360, <laughs> which I actually don't have any games for. Um, it's RGH modded, so it's got a bunch of the shooters preloaded on them already. Um, shooters is my main genre of choice, if, if you didn't already know that. Uh, up on top, I've got a small selection of DVD sets. I've got some Gundam, some Robotech, Battlestar Galactica, Star Trek Next Gen, X-Files, and some random gaming movie videos, some Game Sack. Classic Game Room, Nintendo Quest, a couple of other, M2 from My Life in Gaming. Um, got three of my guitars on display here. Um, first one is my college Stratocaster that I used to use when I played in the band. Next, I got my um, Epiphone Les Paul. I got this in the later half of college and um, also used when I was in that same band. I've got a hollow body um, semi-electric acoustic. I just got a little controller stand here. An old chair. Uh, it's it's ugly, but it's comfy. This chair is as old as many of the games in this collection. Uh, my wife hates it. She thinks it's really ugly, so I cover, have it covered with this blanket, which I don't know if it really helps or not. Okay, so here's my a uh, cartridge game collection here. So these shelves are Atlantic, Oscar, and they're the 720 model. So each section is three columns wide, stops here, another one goes on. So I've got four of these. And in the first bank here, I have my NES games. Now, Anybody who knows the NES knows that they do not come in clamshell plastic cases. Uh, these cases are aftermarket. They're called bit boxes, and they're sold by a Stone Age Gamer. And I did not, I never intended to buy any kind of games that were in cardboard boxes. I think that's kind of a losing battle. And for me personally, I didn't want to deal with the frustration of even being tempted to try to buy more games with cardboard boxes. So. I just bought Loose Cart forever, and then at one point I decided to box my games, and so that's when I went out and bought these BitBox cases. I can show a little closer, close up here. They're airtight, and some of them, you can buy them, have a little pouch here if you have the manual, and they fit really, really snug. And it just, you know, it's got a sleeve, so you can go ahead and print on artwork and insert that, and I think it looks really nice. I do like the idea that they are preserving the carts a little better than just having the pins out and exposed to air the whole time. And I do like the ability to have them look uniform. So that's why I went with those. Um, they weren't too pricey when I bought them. I know that prices have gone up and what hasn't gone up in price really. Uh, so they're a little bit more expensive now. If I were starting with them, I'm not sure I would have chosen bit boxes, but uh, I'm pretty much done buying games, so. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So those, that's my NES collection. Um, up on top, I've got these Robotech figures. I'm a huge Robotech fan. Always was growing up. And these little guys are transformable. They can be transformed into three different modes. And so I do have the set. And so I kind of have them hanging out here. All right, in the second bank, and. I've got my Genesis games, and I do have Genesis games all in, in box. And as far as manuals, probably only a third of them have manuals. And this bank actually extends over into the third bank as well. There's the Genesis. And up at the top is my Saturn collection. Now, my Saturn collection is primarily, it's like... 99% Japanese games. Um, I bought a Japanese Sega Saturn first, and that's because my favorite genre is shooters. 
and just didn't make sense to buy an American Saturn. Although I do know it's pretty easy to play any region as long as you have an action replay cart. So I guess that's kind of a moot point. Um, and then I have my PC Engine collection. Now the PC Engine, otherwise known as TurboGrafx-16 here in the US, uh, the games came out in cue cards first, right, otherwise known as Turbo Chips. And um, they released the CD add-on and then so half of its game half the, are on CD as well. Actually, they might have more games on CD now that I think about it. So here are those. And at the very bottom, Master System games. Don't have a ton, but I do have nostalgia for Master System because there was a point in time where I had the NES and the Master System. Uh, got some. The Gundam Universe line. So, if people don't know Gundam, Gundam is a Japanese anime that's been around since the late 70s. And there are so many iterations of, and series and story arcs of Gundam. So the Gundam Universe line um, brings in uh, different figures from each of those story arcs. Right? And so they come out, they're numbered sets. And uh, Gundam is mostly known for model kits that you snap together. These are actually figures. So they're more durable than modern sets. You're not putting them together. They're, they're ready to, to play with. You just pop them out of the box. Um, I just think they're so cool looking. And uh, they're highly, highly poseable. They're very detailed and articulated. And they're t pretty cheap. They're only 25 bucks a piece. And so I just thought they're super collectible. I just think they look awesome. Sometimes I have them posed. Sometimes not. Right now, they're just kind of lined up in order. So... On the top here, I've got my any uh, my mini console boxes, and this last bank, this fourth bank here, is my SNES, my Super Nintendo games, and these games I bought loose cart as well. And uh, when I decided to start boxing them, I went and I got Universal game cases. Now, Universal game cases used to come in. This is a repro, obviously, because this was not released in the States. I have a couple of repros in here of games that uh, were translations. Um, or hacks like this. Zero Me Metroid, Zero Mission. So these repro, these uh, universal game cases, uh, when they first came out, you could buy these things in packs of 100. You would go online to, and it's, I forget the name of the company, but you would just commit to buying like a, a pack of 100 and they... They were like 60 or $70 for 100 cases. Super cheap. And while they call them universal game cases, they're not 100% universal. Because if you look closely, let's open one up here. If you look closely, you can see that there's different outlines and these tabs are spaced and shaped differently depending on the type of cartridge you're putting in there. Um, it's kind of funny to have a circle here, like like anybody's going to put a loose CD in here, right in the middle. Have it flopping around, bouncing around in there. But um, they fit a lot of cartridges very well, but you know what they don't fit? The NES. If you want to fit an NES game in here, you got to do all sorts of cutting and shaving down to the plastic tabs, and it's really, really messy and... I thought that really wasn't the way to go, and that's primarily the reason why I chose. I went with um, the bit boxes for the NES. So that's why there's two different styles of cases now. And then eventually they made bit boxes for SNES as well, but I was already kind of you know printed out and packed up this way, so it didn't make sense to change again. So I just think they look nice as long as you can get the printouts and organize them. <clears throat> Over here is my CRT. This is a Sony. Vega Trinitron circa 2002. <coughs> and these are the systems I have connected to it right now. This is a Neo Geo MVS C that's been consoleized by that company Time Harvest. And uh, it has the reason why I went with this one is because it has Sega Saturn controller parts, right? SS. <coughs> this is my top loader NES it's been RGB modified <clears throat> an OG non-TMSS Sega, Sega Genesis 
And as you can see, I have flashcards for all of these. Uh, one chip uh, SNES with the SD2 SNES, otherwise known as the um, FX Pack Pro. <clears throat> Core graphics, otherwise known as the PC Engine. I've got the S Super SD System 3, which is a, a fantastic add on. It's able to output RGB and play CD games and cue cards. <clears throat> my Saturn. The Saturn, you can't see it. It's plugged into the back, but I have the Satiator mod uh, or a plug-in so that I can play with CDs as well as on an SD card. PlayStation, it's got the Sio mod. Sio was kind of a big thing. It was the, I think it was the first SD card loader uh, for the PlayStation. Now they have XStation. Um, so Sio was proprietary and you had to go through a lot more hoops to get it installed and get it working right. Um, <clears throat> another thing I don't like about it is that the specific game format, you have to change over the Q file to a specific proprietary Q file and then load that up on the SD card. It's like an extra step. It's kind of a pain. <clears throat> Here's regular PS2. And here we have the g Scart switch i've got a um scart to component switch by retro tank and that all feeds into <clears throat> crt excuse me here's my bank of cds i do like my physical media when it comes to everything movies and music and games so these i don't know about a thousand cds or so I'll go back to uh, middle school for me. Here's my guitar amp. It's a Fender DeVille. This thing is louder than it has any right to be. So I really only can turn that on when everybody's out of the house. Uh, bookshelf I've emptied. Uh, my stereo from college, five disc changer, peanut M&Ms. This is my um, shelf of arcade sticks. So up on top here, you can't see it real well. This is the Hori Multi Fighting Stick Multi. It uh, is an arcade stick that you can connect the PC Engine, the uh, SNES, and Mega Drive Genesis. So it's a very, very versatile fighting stick. And it comes with different three different cords to plug them in, depending which which one you're using. These are uh, some Emio um, arcade sticks that were made for the NES and SNES Mini, respectively. On their own, they're pretty crap, but you can mod them and insert better sticks into them, which is what I've done. This is the Hori uh, Fighting Stick Wii. Now you might think, you know, the Wii the Wii doesn't have very many fighting games or. Uh, or shooters for that matter. And so because it's for the Wii, that means it's compatible with the SNES and NES classics. And so that's what I use this for. This is the Hori Fighting Stick Duel. It's uh, an old school 16-bit arcade stick that's got compatibility with Super Nintendo and Genesis. So it's kind of a unique stick. It's not the greatest. The stick, you know, it's rubber membranes. It's not micro switched, but uh, you know, it's still pretty cool. These are the XE1 Pro line of Microsoft arcade sticks. If you don't know what these are, you should Google them because they're very high end for serious uh, players of of those consoles. Some more Hori, the uh, Hori Fighting Stick and PC Engine, Super Famicom. And so, kind of goes on this. This one here is my favorite. This is the Astro City Mini arcade stick that was uh, that came out with the Astro City Mini um, little arcade plug-in, plug and play. I had it modded to be used exclusively for the Sega Genesis because Sega Genesis doesn't have very many good arcade sticks. So I just wanted a real big, beefy arcade style stick. And the actual controller board inside this originally had really shitty 
compatibility it really could only be used with the the mini and almost nothing else so it kind of sucked so and, and basically i've improved it okay uh, i did a whole video on my arcade stick line so i don't need to go over all these again so just to kind of move on bin o controllers uh, street fighter 2 classic uh edition switch arcade stick all right obviously I use this for when i play the street fighter games on the collections probably one of the more interesting parts of my game room is, is my collection of retro gaming books so playing at the next level by ken horowitz the uh um owner of uh, sega 16 Stephen l kent well renowned renowned history book video games right he's cited many many times um console wars blake harris and hardcore gaming number one i have many of these hardcore gaming 101 books and i can't recommend these enough because these are fantastic compendiums of the articles of the different games on the hardcore gaming 101 website for people who like to have physical books to read through so each one has dozens and dozens of reviews of games highly recommend checking out the website and you can get the books off amazon pet country's ultimate guide to the nintendo games these these reviews these books are very very well written um I, they're not all written by him there's he has a team of writers uh reviewing all the books um let's see pc engine turbo graphics anthology uh this is a bitmap bit, bitmap book uh go straight it's a compendium about beat-em-ups they also released history of metal slug fantastic book if you're into metal slug Art of the Mega Drive. I don't know if you can kind of see the silhouette there. Jeremy Parrish, NES Works. Brett Weiss, Classic Video Games. Uh, I have one. This is uh, Classic Game Room, Mark Bustler. Uh, Sega Genesis Guide. This is his love letter to the Genesis. And a couple other books. Here we've got some vintage um, tips and tricks books for Genesis, Nintendo, Super Nintendo. These are the kind of things that you would just walk into an old uh, secondhand bookstore, you know, and they'd be they'd be a buck, they'd be two for a dollar, that kind of thing. They're, these were all over the place in the '90s, and they're dirt cheap. They might be more expensive now, I don't know, but it's kind of fun to go through and read, you know. The tips for a game back in the day. Oh, look, Joe Montana 2, Sports Talk Football, Kadash, Alicia Dragoon. You know, and if you think about starting up a game and maybe you need a little help or just for fun, just go and read up on what tips look like for the game back back then. As opposed, I mean, I'm so you could find that information online now very easily, but I think it's kind of cool to have in print form. So here's my stash of Retro Gamer magazines, which is a uh, um, an England-based um, publication. I used to be a subscriber, and I had so many issues. I was just, I got them from 2007 through 2000. And, oh, actually, up until COVID, I stopped my subscription in COVID because the they literally were were unable to ship the issues to, to my address anymore. And so for six months, I, I just wouldn't get the issues. And so I just ended up canceling the subscription out of frustration. I emailed them customer support. They couldn't help me out. On their end, it looked like the, the issues were being delivered, but I was literally not getting them. It must've been low priority or I don't know if my mail carrier was pissed off at me or something. And so I, I reflected and I looked back and I, I kind of handpicked my favorite issues and I sold the rest off on eBay just because uh, me being based in the UK, the vast majority of each of these isu issues was was based on vintage 8-bit English, British computers. 
and you know i don't have any tie to that and so what i was really i was paying full price a premium import magazine price but really i was only getting like a quarter of the value from that um so you know i, I kept these and that's good enough uh some other official strategy guides from back in the day official sega genesis power tips books one two three Nintendo Power Strategy Guide, Super Metroid, Link to the Past, Super Mario All-Stars, Official Nintendo Player's Guide. This is the first one ever, right? It all goes back to this one. This was the first one any kid had, and this was amazing. This was like a Bible back in the day. How much info was packed in there, how useful it was. And a couple other strategy guides for that I may or may not keep. Um, I'm not too much... Any, any games past... Um, the fifth generation, I just, you know, I don't, not as really dedicated to those. I mean, I played a couple series like Mac, like uh, Resident Evil, Maximo, Metal Gear, but I just not that into the modern gaming. Oh, here are carrying cases for my mini consoles. Okay, move on over. Computer desk, nothing interesting there. And this last bank here is my, um, primarily playstation cabinet or shelf i should say um ps2 games at the bottom this is probably uh, a quarter of what i had i sold off so many i just i just didn't play them I, I bought bought them for like a buck a piece for the longest time but i just never played them i've got some sega cd games um i swapped out the cases and sold the cases on ebay because I just kind of didn't like how they took up so much space and they were fragile. I thought they were just like an accident waiting to happen. Um, and I don't even have a Sega CD anymore, so I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I might sell them. PS3 games. Favorite PS2 shooters. Greatest 5, Thunder Force 6. Some PS4 games. These are the only GameCube games I have left. Um, I had I pared down from a hundred to these. Um, like I said, I had them on the um, game, GC loader. I just don't play a whole lot of GameCube, and if I do, I just play these anyways. Dreamcast games, not a lot. As you can see, primarily shooters and Marvel fighting games. PlayStation Two Japanese shooters, a bunch of them from Taito. The Barra, kind of pricey now. Um, this is a cave game that uh, I think it's an exclusive. PS1, PS1, Pinnacle of PS1 shooters up there. Middle Columns, a lot of PS4. PS4, PS4, more PS4. And off to the right, Switch. And I, for some reason, I, Switch is so highly collectible. The games just seem cuter. You know, I mean, they are cartridges. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. It shouldn't, but, you know, as opposed to discs, like, there's no fear of scratching the tiny little cartridge. Um, you can lose them, though, so that there's that. Um, and... Some of my collections. <laughs> the majority of my Switch games are like retro collections. Here are my super poseable Robotech figures. These do not transform, but they're highly, highly poseable and they look kind of cool. And they have the set of those as well. All right. So at a glance, that's my game room. Oh, in the middle, I guess I kind of pass this over this is my ping pong table but it's actually a pool table it's actually a, a brunswick pool table um the ping pong tabletop is because uh, we like to play ping pong as well as pool so that's on top or we take it off whenever depending on what we want to do and like everyone else i've got more storage of controllers and junk kind of hidden away out of sight nothing interesting about that so that's my game room 2023 so, thanks for watching.